Hey everybody, Andy with Two Rivers Counterfeits Waterfowl Decoys here with another video for you on a very common problem uh, that we find with flocked decoys. Not custom flocked decoys, but factory flocked decoys. Um, in particular, um, not to point any fingers because I think they make a good decoy. It is of modern production, uh, my choice of a full body goose decoy, um, and that is Avian X. Um, Avian X has a black duck decoy that I happen to have here. Um, I've already started working on it. I kind of got this idea for a video after I'd already started working on these particular birds. But you can see that this uh, is not as it should be. Um, the body on this bird has turned very yellow. Um, in some cases, uh, I've seen them turn pink. Um, but yellow, uh, they, they just get washed out. And this is that, that Chinese uh, static flocked um, flocking that they use and it's rayon and you've probably heard me say in some of the other videos that when you get flocking make sure you get nylon and that's why you want to get nylon um somebody gave me these decoys they've got a copyright date on the bottom of 2012 that doesn't necessarily mean that's when they were made that's just when the, the mold was copyrighted um i'm gonna guess they're probably mm, six to seven years old um and the reason that's pertinent is I have a decoy right here that I also know is six or seven years old. And keep in mind too, that somebody gave me these about three or four years ago and they've just been sitting in the barn collecting dust. So um, this is one of my personal decoys uh, that I did in 2018. And uh, this bird is a model 72 hollow bottom herders. And uh, I use this in the swamps here in Virginia and um, it's still got the rigging on it and everything. I just grabbed it out of the barn. It's dusty and dirty and a little bit beat up. But what it isn't is faded. You can throw this decoy out right now, and this will decoy any black duck that flies in North America. I promise. It'll work. And I've shot a lot of birds over this and continue to as well. And um, if you've seen some of my other black duck decoys, it's not this bird is not very detailed. So what I'm going to cover in this video is the materials and the basic how-to for somebody that doesn't necessarily need or want to get into doing super detailed black ducks like you've seen in some of my other videos but really just wants to take a bird they've already got like this and make it usable again. So uh, for, for very little money. Um, so I've already primed and painted the bill and the head and everything and, and flocked the head. You don't need to do that. I do it because I'm kind of, you know, extra, I guess would be the modern word. <coughs> Excuse me. Fighting a little sinus infection this week. But uh, all you really need to do <clears throat> is cover up this yellowness and make it look like a black duck again. Um, this is a homer that I that I do, and you've seen in the other videos. I, I don't think it was this bird that I painted, but um, you know, there's lots of detailed airbrushed in here, and that's great. It definitely doesn't hurt. You know, no duck is ever going to flare from a bird that looks too realistic. But um, for your average hunter that uh, just wants to add to their spread, you know, by the time the ducks realize the detail isn't there, yeah, you should probably have shot them already. So the first thing that you're going to need is um, you're going to need some flocking, and the flocking that I use. I was using Superior Decoy, they're no longer in business, but there's uh, three suppliers that I found with a simple Google search. Uh, one of them's Flocking Unlimited, the other is Flocket, and the third is Donger. All three of these companies, and I'll put links in the comments to them, um, as well as on the screen here, all of these companies offer feather brown nylon flocking, and you can buy anything from an ounce up to five pounds at a time. Um, I buy in five pound quantities, but I, even with all the decoys that I flock and it's hundreds a year. And if you, if I turn the camera around, you'd be appalled at how many decoys are piled around me. It looks like a hoarder house. There are hundreds and hundreds of decoys you can do with five pounds of flocking. For your regular hunter that only needs to do about a dozen or two dozen, a pound is more than enough. In fact, eight ounces will probably get you through. Um, you're also gonna want a big tote to put it in because this stuff is nasty, as you've heard me say before, you know, so I got my little face protector on, you know, getting ready to go here. You're gonna need a cheap paintbrush, and I take mine and I cut half the bristles off the length so that it's nice and stiff. Um, and you're gonna need some paint. This is what you use as your, as your adhesive. When I say Rust-Oleum, most of the time, people think I'm talking about spray paint. This is not spray paint. This is the actual oil-based gloss, gloss, brush on Rust-Oleum. It's important that you use gloss and the reason being is it has a higher surface tension and it cures a lot harder than flat wheel. Trust me, all these birds, this bird right here is both flocked and painted with gloss paint. Doesn't look like it, but it is. 
um, that increased surface area diffuses all of that light that would normally reflect reflect off of the gloss. Just makes it a lot more tougher. Use gloss, not flat. Um, and you don't have to use Rust-Oleum. They sell this at Tractor Supply. It's called Magic Brand. I've been using this lately, and it's actually what I'm going to use today because it's already open. But um, any oil, exterior oil-based, this is tractor paint. Gloss black works great. Um, you know, they sell different brands at different places, and Canada's got different stuff entirely. So, um, so all we're really going to do here is once you've got that flocking, and a, a pound of flocking, just to show you what a pound looks like, uh, usually a pound will come in a one gallon Ziploc bag. And it doesn't look like a lot, but this is enough. This is goose gray, but this right here will do, shoot, for me, probably 50 or 60 decoys at least. Um, and I, I don't ever know exactly when I'm out of a pound because when it starts getting low, I just dump more in the bin. Um, but this right here will do a heck of a lot of decoys, especially if you're using the bins and you collect your, your overflow. Um, and also in order to put on your flocking, you're going to want a flour sifter. Um, I use a little tea strainer that I stole from my wife as well, but this is a flour sifter. I've used it so much, I've busted the handle off of it. But just one of these cheap, they sell them at, at Food Line and Amazon and everything else. It's just a little turn handle flour sifter, and you're not even going to need that for anything. Just a screen in the bottom with something to scoop the flock with and shake it. So, um, if you've got these black ducks and you want to get them going again, all you're going to do is you're going to take your paint, once you've got your brown flocking, my brown flocking is in this tote right here. And it's the same brown I use on hen mallards and hen bluebills and everything else. You want black paint and feather brown flocking for a black duck. Um, and again, if you have an airbrush, great. You can see my other video for the airbrushing tutorial. But in order to get this back to almost factory new, actually better than factory new, all you really need to do is what we're going to do right here. Let's get started on it. Okay, so here's your little can key to open your paint up after you shake it really well. And you know me being thrifty, I always use the top first. So, a little bit of paint. Come up under the chin. This one happens to be a hen. And um, if you want to flock the heads, you can. Um, what I've got going on here is I've got a 50-50 mix of goose gray and feather brown that I call dirty head. And uh, I use it on gadwall heads and I use it on black duck hens and I use it on widgeon hens as well. Um, but you'll notice that normally I always say two coats of flocking. Well, and that's true here too, but it's already got one coat on it. So that counts. Um, the other thing that you may have heard me say in some of my prep videos is don't take old flocking off unless it wants to come off. If the flocking wants to come off, then you're going to want to scrape it off, pick it off, whatever. Um, but while this stuff does fade pretty bad, it's actually pretty tough and tends to stay on pretty well. Um, so you can just go ahead and paint right over it. Um, no muss, no fuss. You can just make sure all the dirt and crap is off of it. And all you're going to do is just brush this black on everywhere that's yellow. Now, when you get to this little patch on the speculum here, you've got two choices. You can either leave it just like it is, which is perfectly fine. The ducks don't care. Um, or you can flock over it and airbrush it, or you can just flock over it and forget it was ever there. Um, me personally, on this one, eh, why not? I'm just going to leave it like it is. One less thing for me to do. Well, these are my decoys. These are... My should be in, in quotation marks because I didn't buy them. Somebody gave them to me. But um, I, most of these birds I use, you know, for demonstrative purposes or trying out, you know, new techniques and, and finding, you know, good color combinations or trying, you know, sometimes I'll take birds and change the species up to see, you know, what makes, you know, say the best spoonbill or the best hooded merganser um, from a factory standpoint. You know, people, you know, commission me to do all kinds of different stuff. Um, but a lot of times I'll take these birds and I'll either sell them to kind of recoup some of the costs or I'll just give them away to people that need them. Uh, usually kids have probably given away more decoys than I've sold or done, especially lately. I've been giving away bags full here lately. Now 
And once you get into this, you'll, you, if you've ever done, done any flocking or painting over flocking already or, or multiple coats, if you're a seasoned veteran somewhat, you'll appreciate cutting the bristles off that brush and making it a lot stiffer because it moves the paint a whole lot better. And it also wastes a lot less paint. You don't end up leaving a bunch of paint in your brush, which over the course of several hundred decoys adds up to several dollars. All right, that's just about got it. Let's smooth some of the excess high spots out here. Make sure I got everything covered and give it just a second to kind of settle and spread. Make it nice and even. There we go. Set that there. Cover that up and set it aside. I'm gonna do the other three here in a minute, but you guys don't need to watch me do that. Shot rag and clean my hands a little bit. All right, now we're ready to put some flocking on. So put the mask up. And in here is just feather brown flocking. That's all it is. Take my decoy, scoop it up, just hold it over the bin and just kind of start shaking it on just like I'm putting powdered sugar on French toast. Get a good even coat. What this sifter does is one, it keeps your hands off of it and two, any clumps that might be in it from electricity or the manufacturing process, whatever, you'll bust those up. Plus, you know, because I'm in and out of these bins so much, lots of times there'll be pieces of walnut media or styrofoam or whatever, and it'll catch all that little bit of trash that I've usually got bumming around the shop. All right, so now that we've got that on, what I do next is I take my air compressor, which is just off camera here, and my little blow gun. And I'm gonna take and just kind of hit it with some light air. I've got it on about, eh, back her off just a, it's about 60 PSI. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over it real lightly, just kind of push some of that flocking down into the paint. And uh, you can see where we're at now. And, kind of see it change a little bit. That's just laying the flocking nice and flat. pretty darn good. Now I'm going to come back over and just any paint that might have risen up through that through that flock and I'm just going to dust it over one more time. Tap it and shake it. Close my bin up so I don't get anything else in there. One more coat of air.
Couldn't be any simpler. Set this up. It's February now, so it'll take a few days to dry. And we'll put it over top of the heater, but in about 48 hours, it'll be dry and it'll be good as new. So this is uh, where we started and this is where we are. Big difference, big difference. And uh, this right here should uh, last you several seasons. Pretty cheap and easy, so you know, you got something like this, don't throw it away. Turn it into something that you'd be proud to hunt over. Thanks again for watching.